Holistic Voice presents the Food Heals podcast with your hosts, Alison Melody and Susie Hardy. Join the Food Heals nation and learn the secrets to go from feeling unwell to healing yourself. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In real cases, women have experienced a strong desire to stop asking their boyfriends if they look fat and stress. If you experience any of these symptoms, post a selfie to Instagram immediately. All right. Welcome, Food Heals Nation. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm Allison Melody. And today, I'm so excited to be joined by my co-host and bestie, Ashley Billingham. And she is a recovering big law attorney who helps wellness and lifestyle entrepreneurs establish solid legal foundations for their businesses and you guys know, if you're a longtime listener, we spent the summer together at her beach house in Santa Rosa Beach. So welcome, Ashley, back to the show. Hi, Allie. I'm so excited. It's been a while since we've done this. It's been way too long. And because we're always in person, this is like the first time we've done it not in person. So I miss seeing your beautiful face in front of me as we do this. Oh, I miss our dogs running around barking their heads off while we're trying to do some serious recording. <laughs> and that still may happen. I know, yes. right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Food Heals Nation. Well, this is another episode of Ask Allie, or maybe I should say Ask Ashley, or maybe I should say Ask an Attorney because <laughs> of what we're going to talk about today. And Ashley is really going to be the one answering the questions, but we're going to be exploring some really big questions like what is free speech and was mine actually violated and who gets to determine like what can and cannot be said in today's world yeah and i i want to really take a look at censorship and cancel culture i have to tell you that i am you know not a first amendment attorney um but i did a deep dive you know after i'm not going to say after this happened to you because that is victim mentality. But ever since this decision was made concerning your content, I got curious and I am Alice down the rabbit hole on it and I, I can't read enough about it. So um, this won't be legal advice, but I'm super excited to unpack these issues with you. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. And yeah, this is just a conversation between friends and one of them happens to be an attorney. So this conversation means a lot to me because I know that you know more than I do and you're able to research in a way that I'm not. And so I'm just really interested to hear what you found out and it'll just be yeah, an organic, fun conversation. So thank you so much, Ash. I, I'm excited. You know, you and I have covered some um, fluffy stuff. I'm excited to dig into the the really deep stuff, you know, because oh, like our skincare routines yes. are so fluffy. <laughs> <laughs> all that stuff. But you know, I love a friendship where we can talk about all the things. So I'm excited, girl. Yeah. Well, thanks again for being here. Once Ashley and I get through that content, we will be answering your questions from the Facebook group. So stay tuned to the end, Jennifer and Ryan specifically, the questions you posted will be answered. And Food Heals Nation, in case you missed the last episode of Ask Allie, where I described what happened to me, I want to give you a quick recap. I did get censored by my software company. We can talk about what that means. Um, it's the company that I use to run my business. They stopped me in my tracks from continuing to run that business, stopped me from being able to email. And because this is going to be one of the most expensive and time-consuming endeavors of my life, I actually did just launch a fundraising campaign, which you can see at foodhealsnation.com slash free speech. And and that's to help the Food Heals podcast fight censorship and support creators' rights to free speech. And I'm also going to right now, so that I don't have to recap everything that I talked about last time, I'm going to roll the audio from the video from that website right now so I can kind of catch you up quickly on what happened to me. And then we're going to get into it with Ashley to learn, you know, the truth that we've learned, our interpretation, our conversation about what we're finding out about what does constitute free speech and when it applies and how to prevent what happened to me, not to be the victim, but what whatever Ashley said was way better. <laughs> the decision that was made regarding your content. Spoken like a true attorney. Right. Okay. So. Kill all the lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> But we don't want this to occur for anyone else. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm really excited. So first we'll roll the video and then we'll get into it. Roll it, Roxy. My name is Allison Melody and I have been censored for talking about vitamins and vegetables. 
I'm a podcaster, I'm a filmmaker, and I'm an author. My brand is called Food Heals. I believe that the body has the ability to heal itself when given the tools that it needs to do so. My passion for nutrition and wellness began because I watch both of my parents suffer from chronic degenerative diseases and autoimmune conditions. And by the time that I was 25 years old, I had lost both of my parents to long, heart-wrenching battles with cancer. This left me with more questions than answers, and that's when I became so passionate about nutrition and vegetables and vitamins and everything that we can do naturally to keep ourselves healthy. So in 2015, I launched a podcast where I interview doctors, nutritionists, patients, experts, and anyone with a compelling story to share about the power of nutrition and the mind-body-spirit connection when it comes to our health. I use a software to run my business, Food Heals. I rely on this software for my day-to-day operations. It hosts my online courses, it hosts various websites, opt-in pages, freebies, sales pages, and so much more. It's where I collect payments from my clients and mastermind students. It's where I email the thousands of people who have opted into my list to stay up to date with Food Heals. I got an email that my ability to email my Food Heals podcast listeners or anyone who had ever signed up for my email list was being disabled. This means not only can I not email my list, but I can't communicate with my current clients. I can't give away my freebies. People can't join my courses because they won't be emailed a login. And it means that I am forbidden by the very software that I pay for to share the message of Food Heals with my audience that I've built. The audience that I have built with my own hard work, blood, sweat, and tears for the past six and a half years. I had no idea why. Because it took eight days after shutting me down for customer service to even respond to me. Turns out I had been censored for talking about vitamins and vegetables. There is great concern over the unsubstantiated and or misleading medical claims within your content. Patra may not be used to promote, market, exchange, or store, or produce offensive, illegal, harassing activities or business that is likely to be flagged by spam agencies and filters. To continue using our platform in general, you will need to make sure that there are no unsubstantiated or misleading medical claims within your content and mentions of specific therapies should be backed up with scientifically peer-reviewed studies from reputable sources as well as be very mindful of wording and promises made in the future. Prohibited actions. Carter may not be used in connection with any other content that involves to any degree any of the following. Health claims that have been determined to be false or misleading by a regulatory agency or illegal activities. For the record, I do not send spam emails and I only send emails to people who have opted in to hear from me and I do not spread false medical claims. I interview doctors and people way smarter than me to tell their stories and tell the truth about health. That is straight up censorship and now that I've been censored, I've realized that It's my mission to speak truth to power and to be louder than I've ever been before. I will not be silenced. I'm not Joe Rogan. I'm a small Nashville indie podcaster over here talking about my vitamins and my vegetables. If it happened to me, it can happen to anyone and I won't stand for it. When my parents died, I vowed to make it my life's mission to shout it from the rooftops, the body's ability to heal itself when given the tools that it needs to do so. So what happened to them did not have to happen to anyone else. And now that I've been censored, my goal is the same. I don't want this to happen to anyone else. So if you support me and the mission of Food Heals, I'm asking for your donation today. Your donation will help me move my content over to a platform that does support free speech. Your donation will help go to Marketing the Food Heals podcast so I can reach more people, help more people awaken to the fact that a healing miracle is always possible and help people take their health back into their own hands. Your donation will help indie podcasters like me fight censorship and support all of us in our First Amendment rights to freedom of speech. I hope you will join the Food Heals Revolution. So Ashley, you're my friend, you're my attorney, and you know the law much better than I do. And you know, the whole situation that occurred 
um, inspired you to do some research so that we could fully understand this concept, more fully understand this concept, I should say. I'm trying to speak like a lawyer and I'm not good at it. So why don't you ask Stop yourself the whole damn question? <laughs> yeah, just talk like a human. That's actually a problem that lawyers have. We forget how to talk like a human, but let's see what I can do. Okay. Okay. I just want to pick your brain. So the first question is like, what did you find out about free speech? What is free speech? Yeah. So when we talk about free speech, we think about our first amendment right. And I think it's important for context to really just understand what that first amendment right is. So what our first amendment in the U S says is Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech or of the okay. press. So the first important part of that statement is, is that it's Congress. So the Supreme Court has interpreted that to mean any government agency. No government agency can make a law that inhibits your right to free speech, with a, a few exceptions, which we can talk about. But what the First Amendment does not protect against is a private organization taking action at, like has been done here. So the First Amendment only restrains the government. Right. And so that's why when there are companies out there, whether you agree with it or not, like Twitter and Facebook, they have the power and their right to remove anyone they want when they're making questionable, posting questionable information that they deem questionable or unsavory or whatever it might be. That is right. Yeah. And we don't have any recourse. We can say we don't like it. We can fight against it but they still are within their rights. They, is that correct? They are within their rights. So I, I want to I circle back to what the government can and can not do, because I think as citizens, it's important for us to know those limits. But yeah. the, I learned a term, Allie, that is applicable okay. <laughs> to the decision made with respect to your content. Okay. Okay. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. <laughs> it is called deplatforming. Mm, mm -hmm. I've heard of this. Yeah, you've okay. been deplatformed. I've been deplatformed, not mm -hmm. quite canceled. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. I've been mm -hmm. deplatformed from like my email service and the platform that I use to run my business. But thank God I haven't been deplatformed by iHeartRadio, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, right? Right. So the definition of deplatforming is actually um, something that targets, quote, controversial speakers who are suspended or shut down by the social media platform. So you got it right. You you have been deplatformed as controversial by one media outlet, but other media outlets have not at this time decided that you, my friend, are controversial when you're talking about vegetables having health benefits. Right. <laughs> so controversial. I know. Yeah. Vegetables and vitamins. And it is a sad world that we live in that vegetables, vitamins, juicing, and speaking freely about people's experiences of healing themselves with tools such as those is controversial and polarizing. I don't know how we got here. I mean, I know a few reasons why, but I don't know how society went along with it to get here. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, mean, I think some of it is a technology issue because technology has very quickly and very drastically changed the way we communicate. I will take you on a history lesson in a minute because this is fun. Okay. But deplatforming in 2018 – there is a law professor named Glenn Reynolds, and he had a Wall Street Journal article come out in which he named 2018 the year of deplatforming. Mm. Um, and he went into the fact that so much content is now available on the internet and through various service providers. And, um, you know, companies are not the government, and therefore they have the right to regulate how they conduct their business. They get to create policies. And so, you know, I design this for clients all the time. If you have a website, I would love for you to have terms of service that say, this is how you play in my sandbox on my platform. Um, right. And what these 
different companies do is they reserve the right to remove or screen content or to remove your account because it's their business. And they use language like at our sole discretion or without prior notice or for any other reason. We get to do what we want to do because we're the company. And most terms of service will also say in there, we can change these terms at any time we choose. Wow. Mm -hmm. I mean, so basically, in this respect, creators like me have absolutely no recourse or power in the situation because they're within their rights and they can pretty much with that language do whatever they want. It sounds like to me. Am I right? They can. I mean, legally, they can because if you're going to use their platform, then the contract is created around your agreement to their terms of service. Which nobody reads. Sorry, I know you're an attorney and you may have to read for some people, but (laughs) every single time you download an app or anything you do online and you click the little box, yeah, I I scrolled through the massive TOS that they show you. Food Heals Nation, if I hear one person say, they, I mean, reach out if you've actually read them. And I bet I will get no DMs about this, but please continue, Ash. Well, I mean, you know, in that instance, they have the leverage. You either agree to our terms of service or you don't use our platform. You don't work exactly. with our business. It's So they would argue it's your choice. There's no negotiation where if I'm working with a sponsor or a client or whatever it might be, there's room for negotiation to make each party happy uh, before going into that agreement or that partnership with them. But with this, it's just like, it's us or you. Like you either agree to do what we want you to do or to be within those terms, I guess is a better way of saying it. Or bye. We don't care. We don't need you. And, you know, a lot of this is coming about because companies are using on the front end content filtering software. So Mm -hmm. that software, that bot may make a decision about your content that's overly broad. And I think one of the reasons it took them a while to respond to you is because the humans actually had to get involved at that point and make a judgment call. And, you know, companies also to protect themselves legally and, you know, understand in context, I represented companies for 20 years. And so um, it's a mindset shift for me. No, I, I, well, yes, I do. (laughs) But um, there's, there's a different way that companies look at it versus an individual or a citizen who's, who's in the position that you are. So from the company's standpoint, they could have, I'm not saying this is what they did, but they could have taken a look and said, oh, this is, we're kind of walking a fine line here, or maybe we're taking too broad a stance, but they don't want to risk applying it to you in one way and to somebody else in another way and somebody else a totally different way. They've got to be consistent in order for their legal terms to stick. Right. Do you see where I'm going with that? Yeah, I do. And I'm not saying that I can't see it from the other side. I can get out of my own way and see it from both sides. If I was the company owner and I had reason to believe that there was someone using the platform in a way that wasn't you know, of benefit, let's say, Mm -hmm. then I would want to reserve that right. I think that is unfair in my case. Yeah. um, But I understand the general concept of it and also not being able to change something because of making an individual case, because then you have to make that um, exception or whatever it might be to your rule to everyone. So I do understand it from that standpoint. Uh, From my standpoint, I don't think that a business should have the right to stop a business in its tracks based on their sole discretion. And that's what I'm definitely fighting against. And I also feel that I have been censored as a content creator. That's what I'm fighting against Mm -hmm. 100%. But in terms of like, generally, I see it from both sides. I don't have the answer or the solution, but what's going on is not working. This is why people are getting so up in arms when someone that they follow or appreciate is deplatformed on a Twitter or a Facebook or an Instagram. And then you do have the right to appeal. So I do know people who have been censored or deplatformed, as you called it, on Instagram, and they have been able to appeal. And I think it's just like you said, the bots caught something. They go, this is above our threshold of whatever word, hashtag, I don't know. Um, And then they were able to appeal and get their account back. And so I do think it is very important if this does happen to any of you listening to appeal 
which I did send a very, very well-written email. Thank you to Laura Peterson, who edited it, Ashley, who then edited it with lawyer language that made me look a lot smarter. Stop. And I, I did <laughs> respond, which is essentially my appeal. But I said, I'm not looking to come back to the platform because on principle, I'm, we're done here. But the appeal was, I would like to provide you with the peer-reviewed studies that you asked for in order to show you that what I am spreading cannot possibly can be considered misinformation or all of the things that they accuse me of spam. Um, and I will send that. And so in my case, it was an appeal of logic and reason. And I think, Ashley, you helped me put the right language in there. So feel free to say it if you remember it, or I can pull it up if we really want to get into it. But essentially, so that this doesn't happen to other people in the wellness space, because it really is unnecessary in our opinion. And that's kind of what we sent back in really well-written terms, I believe. Well, I, I like that you're asking, like, what can I do to take action? What can I actually do? Am I just stuck because the the company has decided on this. No, you're absolutely right to find your voice, to appeal. And then on a broader spectrum, what can we do? Companies make policy changes when the volume is loud enough to cause them to take action. Companies don't move fast on policy right. changes. It's like death by committee for real. Um, but they move faster when the noise gets louder. And so, you know, I, and I, and I like the way in your letter, the position you took that was, look, I would be happy to have on my podcast, the president of the company or any representative of the, of the company who would like to have a voice in this, because this is where we get into censorship and deeper than that cancel culture, as it's known today is that everything's so binary. It's so black and white. I'm right. You're wrong. There's nothing more to say here. And we've stopped listening to one another. We've stopped being curious. We've stopped asking questions. And it's, yeah. to me, is so disheartening um, that we as a culture find that the way to deal with our problems is just to uh, cancel one another out. Yeah. And um, what I'm feeling I don't feel canceled, but I do not like cancel culture because I, I like conversation. I like curiosity. That's why I podcast, right? Yeah, that's why, right. I, that's what I, why I do exactly what I do because I want to come from a place of curiosity and learning and being open-minded to, oh, there's other ways to think about things besides what I the way that I already think about them. And I love having aha moments on the podcast when I'm learning from someone else going, oh, I had no idea, right? Mm. And I think with the cancel culture, what we're doing is canceling conversations and that is not a world that I want to live in where we can express ourselves and learn from our mistakes. So when we're canceling people, we're not even giving them an opportunity to go, oh, maybe I can learn from this experience because isn't that what life is all about? Like when we make mistakes, it's just an opportunity to learn, to detour, to go in another direction. Like, thank God that I haven't done anything so publicly that I've been canceled, but I fear this is the way that we're going because I feel like my voice is being censored by a private company, which I know is within their rights. But if they have that power, imagine the power as Food Heals grows that the community of cancel culturists, I don't know what they're <laughs> called, the cancelers have on creators and people out there. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm not Joe Rogan. Like, this is how I make a living. I don't have millions of dollars from Spotify to do this. I make income that is built on my blood, sweat, and tears when I book my sponsors and things like that. But that takes so much hard work. And so if this show were canceled, I mean, mm -hmm. do you know that would affect me so much? And not even being able to email right now has affected me so much. And the fact that it's happened to me at the level that I'm at is very scary mm -hmm. and what I'm learning from it is that I want to learn how to make sure that no private company has control over my content to the extent that this company did. Because now I have to spend a massive amount of time and money moving all of my content over. And in case people don't understand what it is, it's like all of my web pages, sales pages, courses, all my video content, all the stuff that um, my private members in my Food Heals You members have access to, all this stuff of people who have bought. I do the Sponsorship Academy, which is also um, a side 
hustle of my business. I have my food freedom course, all of that content, moving that over, moving over my email list, resetting all of that up is months or thousands of dollars worth of work. And either way, I don't have it. And so to have this happen, I just don't want this to happen to anyone else. So as I learn how to navigate in this new world, I guess it's the old world, but it feels new because it feels like the cancellation and the censorship are happening hand in hand in in society. Mm, Yeah. As I navigate it, I will teach it when I learn it, but I'm still learning. I'm learning from you. I'm learning about the platforms, learning about maybe Ashley, my lawyer needs to take a look at these terms of services before I go sign up with a new company or I need to research and find out what are the companies that are for health freedom and they're not going to censor anyone in the health space, you know? So I'm on a learning journey. Yeah, it's a lot. I mean, when when you first, I, I think you texted me or we were chatting on the phone and you told me it happened, the gravity of it, the extent to which it affected your business, I, I, it, it, it didn't dawn on me. Like I didn't understand how deep this went for you, how years of work is going to have to be moved over to another platform. I mean, this is a huge deal. It's huge. Right. Yeah. And like, so I have um, all my payments run through the system as well. So this means that, and I'm not a person that gets paid by an employer, employee, employer. So instead all of the people that have joined all my courses and programs and pay me monthly, whether it's for consulting or because they bought into the mastermind or they bought a course or whatever it might be, I have to go to each individual person and say, hi, can we set up a new payment plan? I mean, the amount of work that is. And then I hope they do. What if they just slow? I'm out. <laughs> and then I'm like, well, <laughs> losing source of income left and right. Who knows? And then also making sure that people that I've given lifetime access to my courses still have that access. So digging up every single person that's ever paid me through this platform and going, hey, you bought this course three years ago. Um, Let me make sure you have a login to the new one in case you're still, you still want the content. And people, when they, let's say you buy Food Freedom, you get access to all the updates for life. So when I'm updating them, you can log in and get the updates. But if your login doesn't work because I move platforms, I need to know who you are. So the endeavor of Finding all of the people and figuring all of that out is a lot of work. And I've gotten quotes for people to help me and it's thousands of dollars that, you know, I shouldn't, I feel I should not have to spend because I've, like you said, I spent so much time building this up and creating, and I I love doing it. I actually like doing the back end, but the amount of time that would take for me to do it, it's, I I would have to shut down business for months. So it's like, I'm going to need a lot of help and it's just something I wish I didn't, I really wish I didn't have to deal with. Yeah. I mean, look, and you're talking about doing your best to honor your commitments and your contracts and, and, you know, all this beautiful work that you've created for people. And it, it's, it's overwhelming to me when I think about what you're facing. Um, but, you know, it, it feels very prevalent in our world right now, this, this sort of discussion, but can I take us back a little bit? Of course. Okay. I was hoping you would. <laughs> this is fun because to me, I, I guess every generation has its something, right? And in all of this, for me, it feels very new. It feels very concerning. Um, and it is. Uh, but I found this reference to a debate in 1969 between the... Um, the U.S. Federal Communications Commissioner and the president of CBS. And at that time, the issue was not um, web-based platforms or internet systems or, um, uh, you know, Facebook, Instagram, those social media types of platforms. At that time, the debate was over television censorship, Mm. right? Um, And basically what is corporate censorship? So a TV station is a company. It's not the government. And so there was a debate about broadcasters, you know, the the head of the the, the commissioner, right, for the U.S., the Federal Communications Commissioner, um, was talking about broadcasters were fighting not for free speech, but for profitable speech. And he accused them of engaging in corporate tampering. That was the word he used. Um, Uh 
that was affecting what he called honest and capable journalists and creative writers who were creating serious product and that it was being suppressed. And and the, the government official was expressing concern about this. Do you want to know what the CBS president said? Yes. All right. You remember? I'm just going to paraphrase. But okay. you remember the Shaggy song, It Wasn't Me? Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't me. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. She even put me on the camera. It wasn't me. She saw the mask on my shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. Is that really what he said? <laughs> Well, in lawyer language of, you know, or in corporate <laughs> speak, but at the end of the okay. day, I read it and I was like, oh, this is that Shaggy song. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So in that case, and in all of these cases, like, I guess the laws aren't going to change is my guess. So I, I don't know. I'm just posing the question for conversation. What can we do? in order to have a voice and use it too without fear of cancellation and censorship. And I'm not saying that Mm -hmm. Ali and Ashley have the answers. I'm posing this to you, Food Heals Nation. I'm posing this for us to discuss. Um, But it is the world that we live in today. I'm experiencing it firsthand. Maybe you've experienced it firsthand, or maybe you're seeing the cancel culture and all of the censorship and things happening, and it makes you unhappy. So I don't know, Ashley, what are your thoughts? What are some things that we can do? Yeah, I mean, they, they say the wheels of justice turn very slowly. And any sort of <laughs> definitive legal decision on this kind of thing is going to take years and years and years to get up to the Supreme Court and have them decide something about this, if if ever, if ever. I mean, the answer from their perspective is probably going to be, well, it's not the government. So there's only so much we can do. So you know, there's a, there's a citizenship aspect to it, right? Like you're Mm -hmm. moving your platform. You're not conforming. You're going to find a different platform who will work with you and honor the work that you're doing. And, you know, Americans speak with their dollars. They speak with their usage. They, they speak with those types of things. And, um, as I was looking at this, this was, this was encouraging to me. There's a concept called resilience in this space as people are talking about it and debating about it. And that is users are more resilient to censorship if they know it's being done, if they Mm. feel like they're being manipulated. So they might listen to something on that platform with half an ear because in the back of their mind, they know there's censorship happening. And also what happens is once people are aware that things are being censored, then they find ways to circumvent the system and they are incentivized to look for the information that they have reason to believe isn't being shared with them. So I I think humans are naturally curious and I, I, I hope that they'll be curious about vegetables and alternative forms of healing. Um, I I just, it's, it's, it's on us though. It's, it's on us to stay curious. I agree. And I know that's why I'm here. I know that's why Food Heals Nation listeners are here. I know that's why you first discovered the show. It's because you were like, my life was affected. I'm curious. Let me find out more. And I think that this whole cancel culture thing discredits our human brains that we are highly capable humans mm-hmm. who can decipher information and make really good decisions for ourselves. And to take that away, I feel like that's what's happening is we should all have this one way of thinking. And that's scary to me because I think there's many ways of thinking and I want to know all the ways so I can decide what's right for me. It's why, just like you said, I can watch CNN or Fox News and I understand that both of them have biases, but I'm smart enough to deser- determine for myself what I think about the situation mm-hmm. without their skew on things. And I know not everyone can do that and people get brainwashed and everything like that. But in general, I believe that we are smart. I believe that we can make decisions. But if we're spoon fed everything from one perspective, then yeah, that then we can't make our own decisions. And so we have to seek outside of whatever narrow minded place we've been in or grew up in or whatever it might be, seek outside of that 
box so that we can have a full perspective on whatever it is, life, business, politics, etc. And when we cancel people, you take that conversation away and you shut people down for saying something that someone of whatever company did not agree with at the time and you take away and you may not agree with it either you may be like take them down and I've felt like that sometimes it happens where I'm like yeah that was an awful thing to say Mm -hmm. but does that mean they should be shunned from society from the rest of their life no they could learn they could change they could think about it or they could double down and defend it either way I respect them for going all right let's talk about this because there's obviously a conversation here if people are being canceled there's a reason right Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 censorship is preventing people from talking about a topic. It, it just shuts down the conversation, and we don't right. we don't get anywhere with that. And you know, if I censor somebody, if I had a platform and I'm censoring somebody, then and basically I'm trying to impose my moral views on the people who are receiving that information. Right? That's yeah. um, that's a pretty big undertaking. Particularly in your instance, and I think we made this point in the letter, of being a technology company. So who at a technology company has the ability to look at peer-reviewed medical journals and the other documented scientific evidence and make a decision whether your message is something that should or should not be out there? Yeah. Um, I loved that we added that in to the response. And I think I put that in at the fundraiser, uh, foodhealersnation.com slash free speech. You can, I didn't put the whole thing because obviously they wrote me a long email. (laughs) I wrote them a long email with help from Ashley and Laura. Um, But we did say that. And, um, you know, we said, uh, Allie does not send spam emails or make misleading medical claims. Here are some ways we back that up with the doctors that we have interviewed who are world renowned, highly regarded in their field. And then, um, the line that you added, I just pulled it up. It's like who at the um, company, I'm not going to smear their name right now. You can easily figure out who it is, who at the company, a technology platform is responsible for deciding what constitutes a so-called unsubstantiated or misleading medical claim. That is exactly right. Ashley, who says who's in charge here? (laughs) Who decides Who's in what's charge? misleading? Yeah. And why are they in charge? And that is the question that I think, regardless of what you're talking about, government, private company, your mom and dad, like who's in charge and how do they come to that conclusion? And that's the question that we need to ask. And then the second question is, how do I have my content and live in a world where I can speak freely about what I want to speak freely about? And that's what I'm learning about right now. I posted this to Facebook, uh, what happened to me before you and I ever wrote the letter back. And essentially, I got all of this information from people who are saying, here is a company that will support you. Here is a company where you own your list and they can't ever you know, stop you from emailing and things like that. So again, learning, figuring it out because I'm not ever going to let this happen to me again. I will not be shut up. I'm only going to get louder. Y'all try to shut me up. Ashley knows I'm a rebel personality. So what's that test, Ashley? Oh, gosh. <laughs> you are a rebel. <laughs> she knows it because she lived with me and she was like, oh, shit. Here it I is. tell her to do something. She's like, why? Excuse me? I'm like She's like, are you my kid? Um, <laughs> I'm like, why would I do it that way when I can do it this way? And she's like, because the vegetable knife is meant for the vegetables. And I'm like, but this knife is just fine. She's like, okay. Oh, my gosh. That's when you were using the bread knife to cut veggies. (laughs) (laughs) And I – You were so offended. (laughs) I think I gently suggested that there might be an easier way. (laughs) You were straight up confused and offended by my – And you were like, oh, watch me use the bread knife. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know why I'm like this. Oh my God. I was raised in a good household with good parents and I still challenge them. I think it's because my dad was a lawyer and so I knew how to argue. Mm-hmm. So I could argue either side, whether I believed in it or not. Yeah. And he always said, like, you're going to be a lawyer one day. So that's probably why we're friends. That's probably why. And I'm the farthest thing from a rebel. It's 
<laughs> it's a challenge. Um, I know. That you're, was funny. you're the people pleaser who follows the rules. Mm, less and less the older I get. Less and less these days. <laughs> yeah, I would say the old you was that, and maybe your daughter is that. But the Ashley, I know she likes to bend the rules a little bit. Oh, Mackenzie doesn't. She doesn't play that either. Uh, neither of my kids do. They, gosh, they know who they are. And maybe we take it back to that, right? Hey, kids yeah. are curious. They do want to learn. They do ask questions. They ask why. Oh my gosh, they ask why so many times. <laughs> and I don't know at what age, it'll be interesting to see at what age society sort of tries to, you know, knock that out of them. But if, we could all go back to that kid mentality of like, oh, dude, what's that about? Why are you doing that? Why'd you say that? Yeah. What'd that mean? You know, it, it's a it's a, a really fresh way of going about it. It's, it's how we were meant to go about it, really. Yeah. I love the childlike curiosity because now it's like, I feel like we judge ourselves from asking because we're like, oh, we don't want to sound stupid or whatever it might be. Ask the question. People love to answer. People want to sound smart. So ask the question, learn for yourself and take it in and go, oh, okay, that's an interesting perspective. You can agree with it or not. It doesn't matter. But the point is you asked the question that a kid would, a child would. Yeah. I want to be surrounded by curious people. It, it just lights me up. Yeah, well, you're really good at that because you like getting to know people. And I think that's a really good quality is to ask questions and be curious about people because we're all different. We all have different backgrounds. We've all come to our ways of reasoning and thinking for a reason. And so when you get curious, you really can get understand people on a different level and really have a lot of empathy for them, even if they're on the absolute other side of the board mm -hmm. than you are when it comes to your life choices, decisions, politics, whatever. It's like, but I can have an understanding because you have a completely different background than me. It makes sense why you would think this way and what I, why I would think this way. Right. That's something I appreciate about you so much. And I've watched you over the course of our friendship. Like You believe passionately in um, a, a plant-based lifestyle. And you yeah. believe passionately about the environment and not, you know, choosing to eat something with a face and that all of that. But that doesn't preclude you from having friends of all walks of life and all kinds of persuasions. And, you know, you're, I've met many of your friends and it's such a diverse group of folks. And I, I love that about you. Um, I do. Aww. Well, thank you. Yeah. I mean, like, I think we all have our own judgments about the world and about people, but I really try my best to come from a place of non-judgment because just because I decided not to eat meat or you decided not to eat cheese, whatever it might be, um, doesn't mean that I can judge someone else for not coming to that decision. Who am I to do that? Like, that's not a way to be. All I can do is live by example and hope that other curious people go, oh, why don't, why do you choose that way? And you know, some people don't do that. Some people are mean about it, but I'm just like, hey, I'm not going to be mean to you, so don't be mean to me. I accept you as you are, motherfucker. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> just be a nice human. Yeah. Is that the moral of the story? Just be just nice. Just be nice. And don't cancel and censor and judge. <laughs> well, yeah, stay curious, but also from, from your end, be resilient. Hey, don't give up on this. Find a way. And for folks out there who do have content on various platforms, I would say, <clears throat> this is not legal advice, but I would say, <laughs> you know, have a backup plan. Have it centrally located somewhere else as well. Yeah. It's because it, it is your content. It is their platform. And um, so have your content in a place where you, the owner of it, can access it at any given time, no matter where it resides on somebody else's platform, have a backup. Really good point. And to your point, so the reason I still have to pay for Carter right now until I move all my content over. But if I had it all backed up in one central location besides Kartra, I could leave right now and not pay to keep it on there. So that's a really good point. So it's like if I had if I was every month, let's say, downloading my email list um, and I had a Google Doc that had 
where all my videos were at any given time for each course or each freebie or whatever it might be, then, um, yeah, I would have less to deal with. So that's a really good point and something that I will be doing when I <laughs> eventually find the platform or multiple platforms put together that's right for me. So really good idea. Yeah. All right. Well, this has been a great conversation. I want to get to some listener questions. But first, Ashley, what are we drinking today? Organifi. <laughs> and we were talking about Mac earlier, and which one is her favorite? Um, so Organifi, uh, we've done the gold, the green, and the red. When Organifi sent them to us, because you and I were going to talk about Organifi, they came in a box, which kids get very excited about anything coming in a box, right? Oh my gosh, the unboxing alone is so fun. It's a deal. <laughs> it's a whole thing. And so I was going to wait to taste them on the podcast with you as we do. And that clearly was not happening. We had to taste them all right away. Oh my God, so fun. It was so <laughs> much fun. And I will say that my daughter, Mackenzie, her favorite is the red and she loves it. I mean, she, she drinks it right on down and she's convinced it makes her body feel alive. She's 12 going on 30. <laughs> She's really cool. Parker has not experimented yet, but Mackenzie loves the red. I, I like them all for different reasons, but yeah, talk to me about it. Well, I think the red is good, especially for kids because it tastes like fruit punch. Mm -hmm. And so as adults, we have maybe a more refined palate, I would say, especially me and you, we drink all the wines. But um, for kids, it's like a very specific flavor is that they're going to do and they're not going to do. And I remember growing up on some terrible oh God, what was it called? That fruit punch. And I know it was terrible for me now, but obviously growing up, I didn't know that. But what if I had just had the Organifi red juice? I would have been able to get all those nutrients in. It's superfoods and increases energy, but no caffeine. You know, it's yeah. good for adults and children. And it tastes like fruit punch. So I think that's like a great way to get your, your nutrition into your kids is to have a really great tasting fruit punch because they want to drink that or a lemonade or something like that. They don't want to drink something that looks like too dark or doesn't taste good. And so that's what Organifi is really good at. So whether you're a kid or a kid at heart adult, they have pretty good flavors. Yeah, it's good stuff. I'm excited about anything I can get in my kids. I'll drink, I'll drink just about anything that's health conscious, whether I like the way it tastes or not. But I really, I've enjoyed the Organifi, but man, I'm, I'm stoked that my, my daughter will We'll drink it too. I get such a uh, plethora of vitamins and powders and all this stuff. So I'm always giving leftovers to Lily. Like if I don't drink my full green juice, I'll mix some of my green juice in her food. And Aww. I take the pulp from the juicer. So like all the carrot juice, like the pulp from the carrots and the kale and all of that. I mix that in her food. And so she's just getting so much nutrition. So kids, dogs, adults, I mean, it's really easy to get your nutrition in and I'm really excited to be working with Organifi. So if you guys want to try it, you could try the red for your kids. I love the gold for sleep. Mm -hmm. It's like a turmeric tea latte. You can check it out at Organifi.com slash food heals. You'll get 20% off. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com slash food heals. Coupon code food heals for 20% off any item. So I'm so glad the kiddos like it, Ash, and um, keep us posted. I'm sure we'll do some more tastings. Like I know you and I have tasted quite a few because when we were in Florida, what was it? The Harmony was yes. the chocolate one that I think you liked. Oh, that one is so, so good. So good. So anyways, Food Heals Nation, check it out. Organifi.com slash Food Heals. So Ashley, what I want to do is get to our listener questions. But first, I know that you found something really interesting in your research when you were looking at the history of this. So I would love to hear that. And then we will get to Jennifer and Ryan's questions. So what did you learn? I, uh, it is really interesting. So I dug back and found an essay on internet censorship dated back to 1997. And this fella named Michael Landier had something that just, I, I can't let go of. It's in my brain. So he talks about the same thing we were talking about earlier, about how censorship is counterproductive, right? It prevents people from talking about things that need to be talked about. But he takes it a step farther. And it's, it's interesting what he says. He says, those who impose censorship must consider what they censor to be true because 
they be, if they believed themselves alone or their position alone to be correct, they would welcome the opportunity to disprove those with opposing views. Mm. Isn't that interesting? Like, uh, yeah, yeah, you're censoring something that there's a part of your gut instinct that tells you it's true. Otherwise, you wouldn't need to shut it down. You would just debunk it and move on. What right. You, you would laugh it off and move on. Yeah. What, <laughs> what do you think about that? I think um, it sounds very accurate to me. And I think it's interesting. It reminds me of the concept in psychology of projections where you wouldn't be accusing someone of someone else if you didn't feel that that was a flaw within yourself as well or Mm. something that needed to be healed within yourself as well. And so it's just a similar concept of we have to shut down the misinformation because what if part of it is true and it goes against the um, message that we're here to share or that we believe in with all our heart and soul. But what if they're right? Like there's something to that. That's fascinating. Wow. Yeah. It's food for thought for sure. I'm thinking about it. (laughs) (laughs) Always thinking. Food Heals Nation, let us know what you think about that quote. I think it's quite interesting. And I open it up to a discussion because that's what this is all about, conversation and curiosity. So tell us what you think. Um, Ashley, I would love to have your help in answering some questions from Food Heals Nation that have come up. Um, So I know that you and I have both dealt with narcissists in our life. We don't need to get into the nitty gritty details, but I feel like when you have dealt with one or more narcissists in your life at an extreme level, you kind of become an expert, even if you've never gone to school for, you know, therapy on how to deal with them. So my good friend, Jennifer, longtime listener says, I have some family members that I think are in a narcissistic relationship, and it's really hard to even approach the subject. I was wondering if there is a book that you'd recommend that I could send them. Also, this is, this is, we'll do the book first and we'll get into this, but okay. also the, the person who is the narcissist, are they like that for everyone? Meaning will they, or can they change? Oh. So I'd love to get your thoughts. Yeah. Oh. I know. <laughs> we're going oh, to get deep again. Part. <laughs> <laughs> and again, just like Laura Ashley said at the beginning, like she's not giving uh, legal advice. We are speaking from our own experiences in these conversations. But go ahead. Yeah, Ashley. What do you recommend? Speaking from experience, the first book I read on this was to help me deal with some family issues that were not necessarily a romantic relationship or marriage issue. And um, the book was called Will I Ever Be Good Enough? Um, it's by a woman named Carol, K-A-R-Y-L McBride. Um, and it really talks about daughters experiencing emotional abuse from mothers who may be troubled or have some of some challenges of their own and, and how to work through that. So that is a great mm-hmm. place to start for family issues. And then um, on, a, on a relationship level, Um, When I was doing my research, some of the most chilling books I ran across, but also the most just straight up tell you like it is, are written by this fella named H.G. Tudor, T-U-D-O-R. And um, one of them is called No Contact and How to Deal with Narcissist in Your Relationship, in Your Relationships. And, you know, so he writes these books. He's a a British attorney, ironically, who (laughs) is a... No attorney could ever be a narcissist. What do you mean? (laughs) And part of his therapy requires him to write books explaining how narcissists do what they do, why they do it, um, what victims of narcissism can do. One of the key things is not just to break off all contact if you can, but it's really interesting because it's from the perspective of the person doing the things. Yeah. Um, chilling in a lot of ways because it's very cold. Um, this is how I harm you. This is how I enjoy conflict um, and, and how I create conflict situations as a narcissist. And so, wow. yeah, and I think, you know, narcissists, from the research I've done and trying to understand 
and, and I won't go too deep in it. There, there's definitely one or two people that get the focus of their attention, right? Yeah. Um, that maybe other folks don't get that experience with that person, which makes it even harder to the recipient of that unwanted attention, right? To, because <laughs> then you think, oh, wait, there's, it's, I'm the problem. No, dear, you're not the problem. You're just the recipient of the attention. Um, is that helpful? Absolutely. And I remember when, um, well, there's been multiple times where you have made a huge impact on my thinking in terms of a narcissist, uh, because I've had female and male narcissists in my life. And I know that you have as well. Um, and, uh, you have helped me wake up to the fact that people in my life who I care dearly for were narcissists. And one of the biggest relationships that was a bombshell to me, uh, was, that you helped me figure out was when you, when I figured it out and I finally agreed with you, okay, I believe you, uh, you recommended those books. Mm -hmm. And when you can see yourself in those situations that the narcissist says, we create this situation to make you feel powerless, to make us have the power, to make you feel like you're not good enough and you have to keep working to better yourself for us and all these things. I was like, oh my God. Right. And so I definitely appreciate those book recommendations because you recommended them to me at a time when I needed them. And yeah, they're very, very effective. And I, and I want to say this, narcissist is not a term to throw around lightly or to yeah. just toss off anytime somebody ticks you off or acts self-centered. That's not what it's about. And, and now's not the time to dive into it, but I would say use that term very cautiously and with research and again, curiosity um, to, to start to understand what it actually is. Because if we throw the term around loosely, then it diminishes the impact of um, how serious it is for a lot of people. Yeah. And um, to the next part of the question that goes along with it, because it's like, um, I think in my experience and speaking from my experience and my own research, which means Instagram and reading books. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just speaking truth um, <laughs> that there are um, levels of narcissistic behavior. And so um, are they a four or are they a 10? And obviously no one can answer that question for you. It's really up to you to determine what you think and how far you need to remove them from your lives. Um, but your question is the person who is a narcissist, are they like that for everyone and can they change? I believe it depends on the degree because there's also something called a sociopath. A sociopath is like that for everyone and they cannot change. A narcissist, I believe, depending on how far along their narcissistic <laughs> tendencies there are, when they get to sociopathy, no, they can't change. But if there are two, I believe they can. That is my personal belief. But most narcissists, once you've identified them, they're not a two. That's your answer. If there are two, they may just have narcissistic tendencies and still have loving compassion for you or for a situation. But if they're eight, nine, 10, maybe even seven, I don't think they can change. And I think they're on the path, if not already, to full sociopathy. What's your thoughts, Ashley? Um, we all have narcissistic tendencies. Like, I think we have to acknowledge that in ourselves. Um, but people who are narcissists don't look in the mirror and say, hmm, oh, Am I acting like a narcissist? Yeah. <laughs> it, it doesn't It doesn't work that way, okay? They won't have that question. They don't nope. question. They don't care. <laughs> nope, no, nope, no. Nope. It does not work that way. You are the problem, not them. And, um, you know, we know this from pop psychology and real life. If you find yourself in a position of trying to change someone, you're going to lose every time. So focus on you and your mental well-being and your mental health and your self-care. And if your self-care uh, takes you to a point where you realize that you are no longer in a position to interact with a person who behaves a certain type of way, 
gosh, we're heavy mm-hmm. today. Um, <laughs> we'll make it life we'll, light. We'll, we'll finish our Organifi red juice and go get right? some wine. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I think I need to open some Prosecco on this one, but, um, yeah, yeah. but yeah, I mean like you, you, you cannot wait on somebody to change. Neither can you change them. What you can do is take care of yourself and set some boundaries. And if somebody continually does not make you feel good about yourself, it is really time to take a look at those boundaries. That's a really good point. It sounds to me, and I could be wrong, that uh, Jennifer, who posed the question, is in the phase of going, are they? And I remember being in that phase of going, is this person? And I've had, I've been through that with multiple people. And as you meet more people in your life, you get quicker to determine. But there's someone that I follow on Instagram that I want to recommend. It's called Understanding the Narc. Her name is Maria Consiglio. And she is writing a book, although her book is not out yet. Um, But what's interesting is she just posts qualities of the narcissist. And you read that and you're like, oh, that happened to me. Oh, he did that. Oh, she did that. Oh, I can relate. And there have been times where I've been gutted by one of her posts because it just reinforces the fact that, yes, I am dealing with a narcissist, and that's okay. It's just a learning experience when you go, oh, that type of behavior wasn't about me, wasn't my fault, wasn't um, I wasn't being wrong in that situation. I wasn't being too much or too little or too whatever the F they made you think you were. And so that's a really good resource that I just want to bring up if you're an Instagrammer like me who likes to scroll and see your inspiration, you're funny, and you're serious. Um, So that's a good one if uh, you're an Instagrammer to follow just to see some of the posts and see can, can you relate to that? Is that person engaging in that behavior? And you will have some light ball moments like I have. Yeah, it's a hard topic. It is. It's a hard topic. It's it's a hard one to see when you're in the middle of it too. Yes, I could not see it. Ashley had to wake me the fuck up, people. Okay, we were on a boat in Italy, and she's like, "Girl," I'm like, "What?" She's like, "Okay." <laughs> more wine and more talk about the fact that you're in a narcissistic relationship. No, you asked me very kindly. I'm just kidding. Actually, you're I, very kind to me. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so because it's hard, right? And you, you can't ever really judge somebody's relationship on your own. But once you've been in it, I had a therapist one time tell me, she's like, it's like bad fish. Once you've smelled it, you can't unsmell it. You. (laughs) (laughs) That's so funny. Yeah. 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 And I, I don't want to give everyone a negative view. Like it doesn't mean like every relationship you get into friendship, family, um, love relationship or otherwise, you're going to go, are they this? But at least you can start to recognize more and more red flags. And perhaps that's what Jennifer is going through. Maybe she's seen it in other people and she's recognizing it in her um, family members um, that are in these relationships. And so you will start to recognize it. It's just like anything. The more you exercise, the bigger your muscles grow. Like the more you start to you, the more experiences you have, the more, you know, your, um, I don't know what the word is, but like your, your ability to see quote unquote red flags goes up. It also doesn't mean that everything's a red flag. No. Sometimes people are just assholes. Like, yeah. you know, like yeah. sometimes we have a moment, like there's plenty of times in my life where someone could be like that fucking narcissist. And I was just having a moment. And so also having grace and not throwing the word around as Ashley, I know you said earlier, because that is a word in society we can throw around and narcissistic personality disorder does not mean I'm just taking selfies all day. That could be a part of it, but also I take selfies all day and I'm a very empathic, non-narcissistic person. So well, let's talk about that word disorder, right? It is a disorder. Okay. And so on some level, a relationship with a narcissist can be very painful. It can hurt very much. Um, but it is a disorder, right? And so when yeah. you're dealing with them, I think have enough empathy to understand that they may not be able to change. And this could be resulting from childhood traumas or things that sort of led them in. Now, we all have a choice, right, how we deal with those yeah. things. But um, a certain amount of empathy for the person who's causing this kind of trauma in your life, I think it's important to maintain, although really damn hard, really hard. Yeah. Look, acknowledge what you've been through and what you're going through so that you can heal. And Ashley and I have been through it. So we're here for you, but also look at those resources and they'll make you feel less alone. I hope we make you feel less alone. Um, But I think 
the hardest part about it for when you are in it and you're curious to know if you're in it and you're not sure, Mm -hmm. the hardest part is feeling alone in it. And so finding a friend to talk to who's not going to judge you and go, yeah, this is it. And you're, you got to go like, just be like, yeah, let's discuss this. And maybe, you know, together we can make a plan so you can leave the situation or maybe you're, you know, it's going to be okay. But having someone to reflect back to you and help you out there, which is what actually ended up being for me, even though I didn't know I needed it. And sometimes that's going to happen. So reaching out to friends and family who can help and support you non-judgmentally, I think is a really good place to start. And if you don't feel like you have that, then finding professional help, 100%. 100%. And and I'll say this too, a lot of times, you know how I said um, that, it, that a narcissist likes to focus on one, maybe two people to get that mm-hmm. energy draw from, that energy, that upset, that angst, that sadness is fuel for them. So other yeah. people in your circle may not even see what's going on. They may be shocked to hear oh, how yeah. it makes you feel. So I think I think you're right. You've got to seek out help and friends to talk to, but you also want to get to really take the time to listen to how do I feel inside on a repeat basis? Am I afraid? Am I scared to open my mouth? Is um, oh, here's a legal term. Anything you say can and will be used against you. You know, like <laughs> if you find yourself in a constant state of angst, um, then it's, it is time to ask those questions. Yeah. And that's a good point. Um, sometimes a person will be shocked that the friend or lover or family member that you're talking about Um, is doing these things to you because they can't see it. And so preparing yourself for that, but being really honest about what it is, because uh, a true narcissist or sociopath is very charming. Mm -hmm. So people have no idea except the people who are in it. So just prepping yourself for that. Uh, But it also will help you. I think I feel a lot of um, like uh, relief when I'm going to be, when I'm able to speak about it, like, oh yeah, that person was, so kind to you uh but it was all fake and they're like what and you're like yeah and then you tell the story and people are shocked and there's something about it where you just feel like justified in your own um convictions or something like that and you start to feel better when you speak your truth um like I know I hope I'll cut this out if if I'm not allowed to say it but Ashley and I have both been in closets like at times and somehow that was okay And then when you tell people that story, they are shocked about the person you're telling you were hiding in the closet for or sleeping in the closet from, like, (laughs) shocked. I'm not going to say much about that, maybe for another day, but I will, this is where I'll end it, right? Um, If you do believe that you are in a relationship with a person who is a narcissist, Plan your exit strategy very carefully. That is when you really need to read these books, especially the HG Tutor books, so that you understand and you're emotionally prepared for the wrath that is coming your way. I'm sorry to tell you that, but um, go watch Julia Roberts, Sleeping with the Enemy. Ooh, uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Understand what you're up against and be ready for it. Thank you, Ashley, for your perspective. And we don't want to scare anyone, but we're just trying to be honest and have conversations here based on our own personal experiences. And we support you. And if you need support, reach out and DM me and I will help you in any way that I can, even remotely, um, just give you emotional support. So we are here here. for you. That's why I do this. Same here. I I will talk to anyone on this subject because I know how hard it is. Thank you, Ashley. I appreciate that. Yeah. And Food Heals Nation does too. All right. One more question. Oh, yay. Okay. Let's lift it up. Yeah. I mean, this one's not, it's not dark. It's, it's okay. It is what it's it is. It's real life. All right. Yeah. It's real life. That's what we're talking about today. I'm sure we'll figure out a way to end it positively. Don't worry. Um, so my good friend and client, Ryan, is looking for resources on emotional eating. So he wants to in, engage himself in all of the things so that he can improve his ability to help his clients. So I've got some resources. I know you've got some ideas, so let's share them away. What do you think? All right. Oh, you want to go first? 
I have like 20, but um, I'll tell one and then you tell one and then I'll tell the rest or something. Yeah, because I've, I've only got one that comes to mind. But yeah, okay, let's go. Let's do it. One good resource is there's an episode of Food Heals that Brittany Watkins was on and she helps people with tapping. Oh, yeah. Okay? We did that so together. I was like, were you on? I know. Just when I said it, I was like, I think Ashley was actually the co-host on that episode. <laughs> And so she helps people tap, um, tapping for emotional eating, tapping for weight loss. And so all of those resources are at pushthefoodaway.com. And there's a free seven-minute video, and it's called her Echo Tapping Technique, and that is specifically to end emotional eating and lose fat permanently. Um, And then, of course, she does have a a course And I don't get paid for this. I'm just telling you. Um, But there's a coupon code food heals to get 50% off. So I just want to tell you, I'm not telling you this because I get paid. I'm telling you this because she gave us a discount. Um, So if you do want to take her course, that is, I do believe in tapping to help tap into our emotional triggers. And so I think she is an expert on this and I am not. So I would refer people to her when it comes to that type of thing. Yeah, that was a a fun interview. Yeah. You know, you asked me this question before we recorded and immediately I my mind went straight to this lovely woman that I follow on Instagram, but she's also a local down here at the beach. Mm. So she, you know, her, her photos are great on Instagram because we live in the most beautiful place in the world. But um, her name is Natalie Leon and it, and her, her gram is Natalie Leon dot loving me. And she just launched a book called loving me. And she, in a very loving, fun, energetic, positive way talks about these issues. And I I really respect her and her work and um, might be a good place to start. I love that. And I love filling my feed with things I want to learn about or inspirational people or all that good stuff. And so I'm with you on that. I appreciate that. And I'm following her too, because you recommended her. (laughs) (laughs) Some other resources I have I do have my course, um, Food Freedom, and that's where I talk about how to end emotional eating and drop the body shame for good. Right now, you can access it at dropthefoodshame.com, but because you know what I'm going through, that may disappear soon. So uh, (laughs) if anyone wants to take that course and it's not up at dropthefoodshame.com, just DM me on Instagram and I will figure out how to log you in because right now... It's up, but it will not be up for much longer. Once I move my content over, it will be somewhere else. Um, And then I have some books, and these are the resources that I posted directly from the course. So um, when you finish the course, these are the resources I give you that have basically helped me, right? Um, So I love the book, You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay. And essentially, this is a great book because it it goes into anything you may be suffering from physically and gives you kind of an emotional reason behind it. It is brilliant. I think it is the best gift that you can give someone. Who wants to learn about this stuff? A couple more books. I won't go into what each of them are, but you can look them up for yourself and feel and tell me if they resonate, you know, tell yourself if they resonate. Women, Food, and God, An Unexpected Path to Almost Everything. Also, The Pleasure Trap. Mastering the Hidden Force that Undermines Health and Happiness. That one I did the audiobook, and it's a good audiobook. Um, what Are You Hungry For? The Chopra Solution to Permanent Weight Loss, Well Being, and Lightness mm-hmm. of the Soul. What a beautiful way to say it. Yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, gosh, I just remembered another one. There was a course I took, it was called Finally Full. Like, what are you hungry for? Finally full. And it was how to fill yourself with spirituality instead of food. So I don't know. I think those are some some good ones that I definitely recommend in that space, in that emotional eating space. So, Ryan, I hope those help. And uh, feel free to reach out if you have any more questions. And Food Heals Nation, you may have resources as well for these things. Like, Ashley and I are answering your questions from our own experiences. But if you have resources and ideas and you want to talk about the topics we've talked about today, like cancellation, censorship, narcissistic abuse in relationships or emotional eating, like, we're open for questions, comments, conversation. So, you know, the Facebook group is foodhealsgroup.com. Ashley, how can anyone work with you, hit you up, hang out with you? Where are you at these days? Oh my goodness. Where am I not? So I <laughs> am on Instagram at kick ash law. Um, I do legal work through a website at www.sandstarlaw.com. Um, but most of the hanging out is on the gram at Kikash Law. I'd love to see you there. I'd love to chat about 
business, wellness, life, the journey, all the things. I, I love being on this journey. And if I happen to find myself in Panama City one day, where could I find you? Oh, yes, ma'am. By the way, I accidentally own a wine shop in... <laughs> <laughs> and- accidentally <laughs> it's accidentally it's a it's a story for another day but yes we have a great time over in a small coastal town downtown panama city florida at mother's wine market um and you can follow us on the gram there too hi lily i know she just said i i muted her right after that but she just said where's apollo she wants to hang out with apollo because apollo is always hanging out in the wine shop he hangs out at the wine shop lily's been to the wine shop we have a really good time yeah. And um, yeah, it's fun owning a small business and doing all those entrepreneur things at a brick and mortar and shop local and all of that, which really I think um, has helped me. It's sort of shaped the way I think about legal work for clients. So it's a gift in a lot of ways, but it was a happy accident. Yeah, I'm so glad it happened. I mean, from the perspective of I just liked going, hanging out there on the farmer's market days, bringing the dogs. Um, you know, your wine shop is where I found out that Lily is a lemon beagle, which are apparently, oh yeah, she's like, yeah, she's like, yes, um, yes, which I are am. apparently more, yes, I am. <laughs> They're more rare than other beagles. So I found out I had a rare breed of dog and she was a rescue. So I had no idea, which is kind of cool. Um, but I love the wine shop. So Food Heals Nation, if you find yourself in Panama City and you want to have a conversation over some wine, over all the things we talked about today or anything else, you can go find her. And then how do they follow the Instagram, Ash? Uh, which one? We're at Mother's Wine Market and we're also, I am at Kick Ash, A-S-H, Law. Um, so come hang out. Man, we covered the waterfront today, didn't we? Did we? Like all of it. We did all the things today. Oh, totally. I thought you meant the Panama City oh, waterfront. Yeah. I'm like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's what came to mind. Oh my gosh. Us coastal <laughs> girls. It's a whole thing, right? Well, literally, my mind went straight to the ocean because all I do is picture you because our whole summer was spent at five o'clock walking down, putting our toes in the sand at the beach in front of your beautiful beach house. And so, yeah, that's what I picture. And then Panama City, too, you were so close to the – when you drive to the wine shop, um, the last 10 minutes of your drive are over the wa- are on the water. It's just gorgeous. It's, it's a gift. It really, really is. So come see us. Yes. <laughs> well, I'll be there. Come hang out with me and Ashley online or in person whenever we can. I'm sure we'll do Italy again when all the restrictions are lifted, which they are starting to get lifted. So we will be talking to Leslie about another retreat. Maybe Ashley and I are going to put something on. We got lots of ideas. Okay. So many ideas. Um, (laughs) Yes. So um, Food Heals Nation, if you want to support me in creating more Food Heals content for you, interviewing more amazing people like Ashley and all of the incredible people way smarter than me who come on this show, I really would appreciate your support. Everything is over at foodhealsnation.com slash free speech. And I ask you either for a donation or to share with a friend. So your donation or sharing with a friend will help Food Heals content move over to a platform that does support free speech. That's not going to cancel me. It will also help market the Food Heals podcast so it can reach more people. So when they try to shut me up, I can get louder and tell more people about the healing power of vegetables and vitamins. And it's going to help indie podcasters and creators like me fight censorship and support all of our First Amendment rights for freedom of speech and speaking our truths and spreading more knowledge and awareness of health and wellness. I hope you will join the Food Heals Revolution, foodhealsnation.com slash free speech. Ashley, thank you again for being here. I appreciate and love you so much. Oh, I love you. This is fun. Let's do it again. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put down the Ben & Jerry's, get off the couch, and take a walk outside. If you experience any of these symptoms, tell your Facebook friends immediately.